Hello and welcome to episode 34 of AFC Filed Still We Rise. We're here on Football Manager 2020. It's another wet day here in Lancashire. And as a result, we're going to take Filed over to Blundell Park for a game against Grimsby. It's the Leasing.com Trophy Northern Section Group H. Bit of a mouthful. Uh, and I can tell you that Grimsby are in good form. They've won their last three games. So this is going to be a bit of a challenge. Uh, we're actually going to go straight into the game. Normally we spend 10 minutes fannying about looking at other screens. Not today. We're going straight in there. Uh, we are playing a rotated team. Uh, you should know. Um, if you want to know why or who exactly, um, you'll have to check out episode 33. That's our last episode. Um, I can't soft soap you anymore. You've got to take responsibility for yourself and find out. Uh, I, of course, will go through the team as the game progresses. I suspect this one is going to be a little bit quiet. Uh, there you can see the recent form. Grimsby decent with three wins out of three. Two losses before that. Whereas we have been inconsistent, apparently. Uh, three wins and a draw in our last four. We did lose before those. Although one of those wins came against our opposition today. Uh, the Leasing.com trophy was previously the Auto Windscreens Shield, I think. Fairly sure I've got that right. If not, I'm sure somebody will uh, let me know in the comments section. Uh, as a, uh, a fan, I attended Wembley twice to watch uh, Stockport in the early 90s compete in two Auto Windscreen Shields finals. Uh, my father was a big Stockport fan uh, from Stockport. And they lost both, of course, against Stoke City and Port Vale, I want to say. 92-93, uh, I mean this feels like something that I can find out, um, let's have a look, uh, past winners, no I need to go right down don't I, it was at the old Wembley, I can tell you that, ah yes indeed, 92-93, Stoke then Port Vale, I'm going to put my house on that being the other way around, uh, but yes as you can see just there, uh, Stockport with the two losses in succession. Yeah, well. uh, since then, of course, some big teams have won it, haven't they? Wigan, Stoke. Uh, more recently, the likes of Portsmouth, Coventry, uh, Southampton are there in 2010, and Swansea, 2006. Even our local team, Blackpool, have had success in 02 and 04. Well done to them. Uh, who are the record holders, actually? This is what I mean. We were supposed to go straight into it. Bristol City. Three times uh, they've won it. Well done to them. Uh, right. I was thinking about mistakes before. Um, I actually have uh, a friend who was a radio DJ for many years. Uh, but he was often placed on the, uh, what would you call it, the graveyard shift. Midnight to 4am. Um, and he reminded me recently that he would intentionally get things wrong on air just to provoke people ringing in and telling that he'd got something wrong. You know, he'd say that Westlife uh, sung a song when it was Boyzone or something. Um, and it became such a regular occurrence that in the end, I think he was getting a cut from the premium phone number that they were ringing. Uh, I don't think that was uh, something restricted to just him i think that was a, a pretty well-known tactic in the uh, industry and the game is already underway look at that see we've hardly wasted any time with me checking up on the auto windscreen shield history uh, the team we should go through as uh, i said i would dan lavacom is in goal our second goalkeeper uh, he's second choice behind James Montgomery this season. So we're giving him the cup games. Uh, that's uh, something that I am committed to. Luke Burke at right back, just back from injury. So Tyrone Williams has been filling in most of the time uh, for him uh, this season. So it's another opportunity for him to get back to match sharpness. Uh, then we have our National League uh, pairing in defence. Kyle Jameson and uh, Neil Byrne, club captain. 
I'm still not sure who's going to partner our new signing Jan Songo in defence, so a good performance by either man could tip it in their scales. Andy Taylor is our backup left back this season, a veteran player for many years. Uh, he's uh, replacing Scott Duxbury today, who was on loan at Chorley last season. Midfield three of Crowsdale, Cregan and Romario Vieira. Now, Romario is an interesting character. Uh, last season, we had Mark Yates uh, in the squad, who's since retired. He was an awful trainer. He used to show up on the weekly report every time in the red, saying he'd not performed well in training, but on the pitch, never let us down, whether it was on the right wing, left wing or through the middle. Uh, somebody we could uh, rely on. Romario is uh, well, he's kind of taking that mantle over. So he's our worst trainer at the club at the minute. But uh, this is an opportunity for him to do something uh, in terms of performance and show us something. Muldoon is on the right. Uh, he recently scored for Harrogate in the playoffs. Uh, really glad to see him uh, make it to the playoff final where uh, Harrogate will play Notts County. Sir Hat Tasmir, we've recently brought him back on loan from Peterborough. And Chris Porter is the striker. Now, he was signed originally thinking that he was going to be our number one uh, forward for this season. We didn't think we were going to be able to get hold of Jamie Proctor again. As it happened, we did. Uh, so Porter, much like Lavacan, will be probably restricted to cup games and the occasional league appearance. Uh, there's Luke Burke's customary yellow card. Uh, always seems to happen. Uh, also, I should say, it also has happened to Tyrone Williams as well. So uh, he's not alone in that. But Grimsby, uh, good save by Dan Lavacombe. Some good football there by Tilly. Grimsby have got some really good players. Balde up front is a good uh, striker. Hessen Fowler, uh, central midfield, is on uh, set-piece duty for Grimsby. And he's really good um, there. In the other game in our group, Leeds under 23, so if you've just seen, have taken the lead. Uh, they're two goals to the good against Macclesfield. That sounds like I'm on Soccer Saturday. Uh, but this uh, game seems to be really devoid of proper goal mouth action. Very even. Six shots apiece, three each on target. Um, we're shading possession though, so hopefully if we can uh, give the lads a boost at half time. Nope. Of course not. Uh, Kenny McKenna, as usual, living up to his reputation of uh, not uh, encouraging the boys in any fashion whatsoever. Uh, one thing that I've been really sort of um, disappointed to read about, especially on social media this last week, has been people criticising Football Manager 2020, specifically the match engine. Uh, I think people are getting a bit, um, a bit annoyed at the repetitive nature. Uh, a lot of highlights, certainly, you know, we're currently on um, extended highlights, will sort of centre around the set pieces. So, and that's obviously a bit of a flashpoint. Um, I think people are getting a bit uh, a bit bored, maybe. Uh, good strike there by Tasdami and McCowan equal to it. Um, which I, I think there are two sort of different parts of that. One is, is that sort of the case and... Uh, I think they do have a point, although I'm contractually obligated as an assistant researcher for Sports Interactive not to criticise the game. Uh, but the second part of that is we are kind of coming to the end of its life. You know, the game has been out for um, several months now. Uh, and Grimsby have taken the lead. Maycock, a uh, bit of a scramble in front of the goal. Uh, not cleared, should have been. Uh, Lavacombe makes the initial save. Came back off the crossbar, and then he's poked that home. Uh, that's going to drop us down to third in the group. So I'm just going to make a couple of changes. Burke's going to come off. Uh, he obviously is coming back from injury. Haven't seen anything from Romario Vieira. So Dan Bradley is going to get a bit of a go. Um, I would like to bring on... I would like to bring on one of Phyllis Kirk or Devon Green at some point on the wing. Um, whether that's possible, we'll soon find out. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, the criticism of Football Manager 2020, it's kind of coming to its natural uh, life. By now, people have been playing it since 
sort of probably early October when the first beta came out. Um, so that's now nine months we're getting on. So it is sort of the norm, um, but I do sort of sympathise that uh, some of the uh, match engine choices do seem a little bit strange. And for example, I, you'll have heard my frustration in previous episodes that sometimes when it seems like we've got a good chance, um, we're not getting to see the highlight, which is a big shame um, because that's what we all want to see. Uh, as it stands, I mean, we've not exactly seen much in the second half apart from uh, the Grimsby goal. And I don't believe that that's the case. I think there's more going on that we could have a look at. Uh, although, as I say, that Grimsby are uh, going to score their second. Alberto Balde. Mm. Um, yeah, I didn't really expect much out of this one. It does mean that we've lost our first two cup games of the season. And really, <sighs> Jameson and Lavacombe poor performance. I mean, how Jameson's got a 6.7 above Burns 6 now is anybody's guess. Um, but just as this highlight comes to a close, uh, it's put over the bar. We're going to make that change. Uh, I think we're going to bring on Phyllis Kirk for Muldoon. What I can say is that I am still really enjoying Football Manager 2020. I'm, you know, committed to, I've started doing this YouTube save. I really want to give it a go. Um, and I want to go further with a team from the lower league, as we have done, than I have before. Especially my team, the team that I research for, team that I support, AFC Filed. Uh, if only we can get it right. The one thing that I should point out, obviously, is that this is the point of the year also, um, as the life of Football Manager 2020 comes to the end, is that everybody's asking Sports Interactive and Miles Jacobson uh, on Twitter about when uh, they're going to get some details on Football Manager 2021. Uh, Sports Interactive have a policy of not announcing any future games until uh, very much closer to the time. Uh, there is a sort of line that Miles uses that they've not confirmed any upcoming titles just yet. Um, but that still doesn't put people off. Keep uh, keep on asking and they get the same answer. Uh, but obviously we expect Football Manager 2021 to appear. There's just no way you can confirm that until uh, it comes out officially from the channels. Uh, yeah, we've lost that one. Team was dis their performance was disappointing. Oh, there we go. There's the green. Everybody saw that, didn't they? Before the game, half time, nothing. After the game, when we're whipping them, oh, they're all for it, aren't they? Um, Harlan Seals move to Liverpool. Anybody else read that as well? That wasn't just me, was it? Can we have a look at that? I wonder if it'll give me uh, some information on that one. This is the point when I expose how badly um, I can find out stuff on Football Manager. Uh, you're telling me about Leeds, aren't you? Can I see uh, anything about Premier League? Europe? No, nothing has, has come through just yet. Anybody could have liked to tell me how I uh, find out that news? Tony Pulis has been sacked already. Sorry, I'm just going to uh, depart that for a second. Must have been before the season started. He's not been sacked since, has he? With Blackburn Rovers? When was he sacked? He was as well. 22nd of August. They won in the first round of the Carabao Cup. 23rd in the championship. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of the light blue Blackburn kits, I have to say. Blackburn were always a, a hard blue colour, a darker blue than what they've offered in recent seasons. I want to see um, about Harland. 
Can we do that? Let's have a look at Liverpool. I'll see how much they've spent on him. There we are. He's not there yet, is he? In fact, transfers. Transfer history. Yes. Oh, that is eye watering. 65 million uh, from Borussia Dortmund. They have sold quite a bit as well, actually. Minamino, obviously, we mentioned in the last episode. And Marco Grucic is now at Rene. That sounds like I'm in a lower low, doesn't it? Uh, how is he looking? Young Harland. I mean, that is a strong side party that he's got going on there. 20 years old, 11 caps, 14 goals. Oh, it's sickening, isn't it? What did he do last season for Dortmund? Not very much, actually. 18 goals in 33. Mm. I mean, I'm not going to turn my nose up at it, but he scored more for Burn that season in 2016. 18 in total and then this season he's just got the one assist from one appearance before he has joined Liverpool and given that he's played two internationals this year and not scored that means at one point he was nine internationals 14 goals Christ a bike he wants to win a trophy and he's excited at the team's chance to win the Premier oh, okay I could be there, yeah, you know, could be. Uh, but he has indeed taken to international football like a duck to water. Well, so there you go. Liverpool are making waves in the transfer market. I mean, that's probably going to mean. Can I see what their last uh, formation was? Yeah, I mean, he's clearly going to take the place of Rubinho up front, isn't he? Rubinho? Roberto Firmino is what I was supposed to say. But he's valued at 78 million. Ooh, right. I shall be keeping my eye on Liverpool to see where he fits in then. Because if you've got Mane, Salah and Firmino, and now Haaland, I mean, is that stockpiling? What's he worth? 79. There's not much difference, is there? That's interesting. I wonder how old uh, Jürgen is going to keep all those three happy. Hmm. Right, so sorry about that, everybody. We seem to have uh, taken a bit of a detour there after, you know, sticking to good time, getting us into the game, which we lost 2-0. <laughs> well, uh, we'll not really mention that so much. Uh, but <laughs> after what I was saying about the criticism for the match engine, they scored all their goals from set pieces. Of course they did. Well, not much we could do about that. Well, there was. Cal Jameson could have played a lot better, to be honest. Uh, and there's an error from Fyle to Neil Byrne, which sort of suggests, by not even playing, Alex Whitmore has just put himself forward as Jan Songo's defensive partner for next week. Uh, and in fact, next week is going to be Friday, because uh, episode... Oh, I always get this wrong. Episode 35 is going to be uh, this game against Bradford City. Uh, top of the table clash-ish, second versus third. Uh, neither team have been beaten this season. We're the only two unbeaten sides in the Skybet League 2. Uh, that's going to be episode 35. And following that, uh, I think we're probably going to have a look at this game It's uh, against Salford. Back at Mill Farm, we are going to welcome our friends, our former... Um, playoff final opponents uh, the team owned by you know the class of 92 along with uh, Peter Lim from Valencia uh, you know Gary Neville from Paul Scholes Nicky Button all those boys uh, Ryan Giggs uh, so I think that's going to be episode 36 as you can tell that maths is not my strong point uh, and then after that we've got the leasing.com trophy game so Leeds under 23s who have just beaten Macclesfield. We could do with a win there as well. I suspect that's going to be the episode after. Because I'm feeling like now that we've lost our first game, we probably need to uh, get a point on the board. 
in Group H. Thank you for joining me today. I apologise for going a little bit longer than I, I wanted to. I was trying to get this under 15 minutes, but uh, it didn't quite work out. Well, persistence is our friend. We'll uh, go again next time uh, when we play Bradford. I'll see you then.